Okay, now it's time to take a look at this week's New York Times opinion pages. Now, Tom Friedman is an advocate of action on carbon emissions to spur research in energy technology. Here's what he writes in his column. Imagine how poor we would be today if U.S. firms did not dominate the top 10 Internet companies. Well, if we don't dominate the top 10 energy technology rankings, there's no way we're going to be able to afford decent health care for every American. No way. You buy it, Nora? Yeah, I, I usually buy what uh, Tom Friedman writes. <laughs> uh, I must say, uh, my favorite columns, I must say, of the week uh, were Maureen Dowd, of course, uh, who tackled Sarah Palin's sudden resignation with a mock look at Sarah's diary. Here's part of it. She wrote, you didn't really think I was going anywhere, did you? I'm one of Google's hot trends. We're doing a fundraising push this week on Sarah PAC to destroy Obama's attempt to destroy capitalism. And forget about Obama's youth revolution. I pose for a cheesecake shot in runner's world with short shorts and a crumpled American flag that's destined to be on the bedroom wall of every conservative 12-year-old boy. It's the metaphor. Stupid. And I know you took a look at some of those shots from runner's world of Sarah Palin and those short shorts because I sent them to you, John. Nora, look, uh, uh, I have to say I have not looked at those shots yet, but I'm, I'm looking at them right now. But look, uh, I think she's going to do her own work for capitalism because she's going to make an awful lot of money. I know this is a controversy between her and Levi Johnston uh, uh, trading charges back and forth, but uh, she okay. has got the ability to make a lot of cash very rapidly. No, and that's exactly what Levi Johnson said she wants to do. And, of course, a very strong response from Palin's uh, spokeswoman. Should we get a little dignified now and bring in yes. op-ed columnist uh, David Brooks? Uh, because, uh, uh, David, you wrote about this uh, this week. Uh, John, take it away from here. You know, David, uh, you talked about the loss of dignity in public life in the wake of several of these high-profile scandals. Let me read a little bit of, uh, of what you had to say. Um, Let's find the script here. First, there was it. Mark Sanford's yeah. press conference. Here was a guy utter lack, utterly lacking in any sense of reticence. Then there was the death of Michael Jackson, a guy who was apparently untouched by any pressure to live according to the rules of adulthood. And then Sarah Palin, a woman who aspires to a high public role but is unfamiliar with the traits of equipoise and constancy. Tell me a little bit about what you think uh, David Brooks has produced that circumstance. Well, first I've got to get on Nora's list of best column of the week, though. I'm going to shoot for that next week. Something to, something to shoot for. Uh, sorry, David. I do. Yours was great, too, but sorry. <laughs> yeah, my, my basic point was if you go back through American history, people had a bunch of rules for what dignity was, and George Washington was sort of the founder. He literally had a list of 110 rules of how to be a dignified public person. And some of them were just simple rules of politeness. If somebody's talking to you and they're standing and you're sitting, you should stand up. And some of that was just basic politeness, but some of it was deeper, and it was how to be a dignified person, and that meant being disinterested. Remember, through most of American history, presidential candidates didn't run for office. They didn't do end zone dances of self-promotion because that was thought to be undignified. Other things was to be calm, uh, and the other things were just to be steady and just to be reticent, not to sort of barf your emotions all over the screen. And those rules have died, and as a result, I think a lot of people in public life and maybe in private life, too, don't really have rules for knowing how to act, and I think we've seen a lot of that this summer. But you think, Did David, that Barack Obama may have an impact on that? I thought that was fascinating since you're a conservative and you uh, looked with some hope on Obama. Talk about it. Yeah, well, you look at uh, some people in American life are just naturally dignified. I think Joe DiMaggio is naturally dignified. Martin Luther King, Lauren Bacall, the actress. Barack Obama embodies all the qualities of, of dignity. He's very calm. He's very measured. He's very reticent. His family life is very traditional and very proper. It's un almost unimaginable. Imaginable to me the guy is going to get into a personal scandal. So you may agree or disagree with one policy, but I think what he does is he takes the rules of dignity, which a lot of us thought is obsolete, and he brings it modern. He makes it alive for a new generation. So whatever you think of his policies, personally, I think he's going to have a big positive impact on the country. David, uh, you left out uh, John Ensign and his father's <laughs> payments <laughs> to, to uh, his, his mistress, girlfriend, former staffer, um, slash, 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 in, in your column. But I guess the question is sort of as we watch this lack of dignity uh, in Washington and across the country, what, what's happened? 
Yeah, you know, all, th we, all three of us spend a lot of time covering politicians, and I don't know about you guys, but in my view, they're all emotional freaks of one sort or another. They're guaranteed to invade your personal space and touch you. I, I sat next to a Republican <laughs> senator once at dinner, and he had his hand on my inner thigh the whole time. I was like, get me out of here. I can what? only imagine what happens to you guys. Sorry, uh, who was that? I'm who not telling that? you. I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so a lot of them are spent so much time needing people's love, and yet they're shooting upwards their whole life. They're not that great in normal human relationships. And so uh, they're like freaks. Uh, they don't know how to, they're lonely. And they reach out. I, I've spoken to a lot of young women who are Senate staffers, and they'll have these middle-aged guys who are sort of in the middle of a midlife crisis, emotionally needy. They don't know how to do it. And so they're like these St. Bernards, you know, drooling everywhere. Uh, and you find <laughs> a lot of this happens in midlife and in, among very powerful people who are extremely lonely. Can I ask one other question, David? Do you think, what about female or women politicians? Are they dignified, and are there examples of, of, of when they have not? Or does it tend to be the men who are less dignified? Yeah, I, I think that's mostly a matter of genetics. <laughs> I do think that, <laughs> I, 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 I do think there's I loneliness. I know it's just a softball, David, and you just, you really hit it very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I could think of sort of St. Bernard sloppy uh, women who are licking their aids, but... Uh, but no, I can't think of that. I'm not going there. <laughs> Did you have a couple of drinks at lunch, Dave? Yeah, this I mean, this is, is, you, this you've this hit is me. Clearly. I'm trying not to be too dignified and stuffy. <laughs> well, well um, David Brooks, as always, thank you very much. That was a lot of fun. You may have not gotten best columns of the week, but you had best appearance of the week, certainly. <laughs> thank Thanks you, so thank much. Thank you.